Welcome to this video in which I'm going to be looking at this uh, custom nameplate that was made by Kevin Kennedy in his fantastic uh, YouTube channel, Product Design Online, um, and uh, putting my own take on it um, because I've taken this, this idea of a 3D printed nameplate and developed it into um, a, an LED illuminated uh, 3D nameplate instead. So thank you to Kevin for providing me this inspiration. Um, so let's have a see what I've got on my other screen over here of Quantum Fusion 360. This is my interpretation of, of Kevin's uh, original idea. And there's a few things I've done with this, um, which I'd like to go through uh, in sequence and uh, suggest that uh, in order to be able to make this into an LED illuminated mood light using what well, it's called Z glass in our case. We're working with Zortrax 3D printers, so it's a it's a glass like uh, 3D printing filament. Um, we 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 need to do a few things to uh, the CAD file that Kevin proposes. Okay, so what I've got first of all is uh, here a brand new um, solid model workspace, and the first thing I'm going to do is just clarify the way that I've got the uh, software set up. If I just come up to my account here, go to preferences. Just the one thing that I always do is I change in the general controls here, the pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts to be like Tinkercad and not like Fusion. Um, and that's partly because I, I use Tinkercad as well, but uh, also because I find that the ability to right click and be able to move my images around or basically pan them around is so useful. And I've got, of course, the wheel mouse there to zoom in and out. So I just find that a much more simple process than where the right click normally gives us this kind of um, some sort of selection tool. I actually don't know what the tool does. I've never used it. I'm sure it's got a very, very useful function, but this system works better for me. Okay. So in the video by, by Kevin Kennedy here, the first thing that he does right at the start is he, let's just whiz through here, is he's going to use uh, this box, the create a box command. So he comes through here and uh, and he's going to use yeah a, a create box command. And he comes to here and he creates box and he also draws it out as well. Um, so that uh, the X coordinate here uh, is actually not the long edge of the design. Um, this is perhaps me just being fussy here, but let's see, let's start a new sketch here. I'm gonna build it onto the onto the top work plane here and yeah what he does is he comes along and oh he doesn't even go to create a new sketch sorry what he does here and look i've got a problem now because i've created a new sketch so let's actually undo that to get rid of that sketch so my timeline here now has no sketch i don't think he talks much about the timeline but the first thing he does is he goes to create and he creates a box and so then he selects this top work plane and then he draws the box out he draws it this way i'm going to draw it this way because i want to have the x axis basically to be um my uh my front work plane here um and then once he's dialed in his numbers he gives it a, a thickness here and what that provides me with is just one um, object in my timeline here one action which is the creation of a box now first of all i don't like that so much uh because it gives me less control compared to drawing a sketch and then extrude that shape, that, that, that text with a feature. Um, and also I found as well that later on when I'm doing this 3D text, what I haven't shown you is that I am going to shell the text out. And doing this shell feature in conjunction with this box command I have found does not work. Now, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my installation of the software. Maybe it'll work for you, but I have had a problem there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and delete it. Or of course I could also just have undone the creation of that box. So let's do it another way. This for me is a much more um, sustainable and future-proof way of creating this. I'm going to come to this create sketch tool. I'm going to click again on this top work plane. Okay, so now instantly for me, it's put it into the correct kind of format. So here's the red X coordinate here which i can see in my 3d cube here here's my green or y line uh, axis and the z of course is coming out of the document okay so let's now come to my two point rectangle tool i'm going to use the wheel mouse here to zoom it around a little bit and zoom back in again i'm of course going to start with the bottom left on the origin and i'm going to bring this out now i'm going to dial in my values here for this 3d print and here's the next thing i'm going to put some controls on this um, based on the size of the build platform in our 3d printers so our 3d printers are um, maxed out at a build platform size of 
200 in the X millimeters and 200 millimeters in the Y. So what I don't, I don't want to do is extend my 3D print all the way out to 200 millimeters because I tend to find that the uh, build platform heat uh, diminishes towards the edge and sometimes we get a little bit of peeling. And even though we're using ABS gloop, which is basically yeah, the filament dissolved into acetone to help the model stick to the platform, it's always best to try and keep the models a little bit in from the edge. So I'm going to suggest here, I'm just going to tab it across with the tab key on the keyboard there onto this length. I'm going to suggest we max this out at, well, I wouldn't go any more than 180, but I'm going to limit this myself to 160. I'm going to stick with the value that's there. And in terms of the depth of this, well, we're only going to have one line of text. And I'm also thinking here about printing multiple um, 3D models onto the 3D printer. So I'm going to ask here that we don't make this, let's obviously greater than, okay, um, if I do 40, how does that look? Yeah, I'm not going to go greater than 40 millimeters. I'm going to ask anyone that's doing this for us in, in, uh, in our school not to make it any thicker than that. And the reason for that is because now I can um, have four prints going at the same time. That's going to be 40, 80, 120, 160 millimeters. I can fit all of that onto the 3D printer without any problems. So let's just enter that there and that's got me this um, this sketch, okay? Now at that particular point, I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, I know why. The dimension at the bottom didn't work there. Let's just see why I'm going to undo that, I'm going to draw it again. And I know why that was the case, because I tapped it across 260. Uh, and what I didn't do is lock it. Now, can you see how that's now been locked? OK, whereas the 50 isn't locked. So what I needed to do there basically was either dial it in and then tab it or dial it in. Yeah, dial it in and then tab it. That's the secret there. And that will lock the dimension. But that means when I press enter now, those dimension lines will appear on the screen. And incidentally there, because this is what's called parametric modeling, if I double click, double click on that value and I enter in an alternate value like 150, then it will update the, the, the size of the drawing. So of course, I, that was 160. And I'm going to enter that. And this one here should have been 40, not 50. OK, so let's just finish the sketch there because that is the end of my drawing of this sketch. Um, and let's also here just make sure that I can see my origin because that's going to give me now, perhaps not see the uh, the work planes there, but I can see the X, Y, and Z which uh, axes, which shows that that is the origin of the drawing. And I can see down here I've got a sketch. Now, as I said, in, um, in Kennedy's view, um, let me get sure I've got this right here. Uh, yeah, Kevin, Kevin Kennedy. So I call him Kennedy there. It's not Kevin Kennedy. <laughs> um, in Kevin's view, he had this all as a box. And what I'm saying is here, now do it as a sketch and then extrude this as a feature into a box. So now I'm going to click on the extrude tool. And let's just see what happened there again. I had this box, I had this sketch already selected when I went to extrude. So instantly I'm able to apply an extrusion to this. Let's escape that for a second. If I deselect everything and go to extrude, as it turns out, I've only got one thing I can extrude, so it automatically selects it. But if there were other sketches, you know, if I have in here, if I if I right click on the sketch and go to edit sketch and I draw in here another box up there, then finish the sketch. Uh, make sure nothing's selected and then go to extrude. It doesn't know which box I want to extrude. So now I've got to click. Uh, and if I don't want that one, I've got to click on the X on my dialog box and then click on the right one that I want. Uh, okay, well, let's cancel that again. Let's just undo the creation of, in fact, no, let's not undo. Let's actually right click. Let's edit the sketch, select that box, delete it, finish the sketch which is another way of doing it. Uh, and then let's go ahead and extrude this. Now, again, Kevin says he has a depth here of five millimeters. I want to be um, making this into my my light acrylic or my, my uh, Z glass, not acrylic, my Z glass ABS uh, LED illuminated name black. And uh, I, I, for me, if I put in a five millimeter thick base, two things are happening. Number one, um, I'm creating a very, very thick base, which is going to, you know, to a degree, the thicker the, the Z glass, um, the less transparent it is. I want to try and make the Z glass as thin as possible, then more light will come through. So five millimeters is a bit too thick. Plus, by having it five millimeters in thickness, um, I'm actually using an awful lot of filament just to make a flat base. And when I put this name plaque on top of uh, an, some LEDs, I'm going to have those LEDs mounted in a laser cut base. Unfortunately, I can't show you my model here because I'm not doing this in the workshop. Um, I'm doing this at home and I don't have my model with me, but um, 
the, the, the base is going to be laser cut out of some acrylic and it's and that's going to make the base that the name plate's going to sit on. So I'm going to have this just as a 1.5 millimeter thick base, which I find is the thinnest I can 3D print on. If I go thinner than 1.5, if I go down to one millimeter, for example, it's so thin, it's really brittle and quite fragile. So that'd be my suggestion, not thicker than, than 1.5 either, make it 1.5. Okay, so that's the base. So I've been uh, I've been going on here, let's just see, how long have I been going on? Uh, I've been going on here for 10 minutes and all I've got so far is just this space. Loads of discussions going on here. Um, what I'm going to do at this point is stop this video um, and then the next one I'm going to look at my the, the next thing that I suggest we change about Kevin's fantastic 3D model.